when the fan works and the compressor does not work in the mini split inverter AC. In today's video, I am going to explain to you how to check and fix this problem, which applies to any mini split inverter AC. I will explain the problem on the O general mini split, as we are facing the issue in this unit. The fan of this mini split AC is working, but the compressor is not starting. The fan works for some time and then stops. Now I will wait and see what error this unit shows. 10 minutes later. The fan also stopped after 10 minutes. The indoor is showing an error. The operation light is blinking. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 times. Now let's check the timer light blinking. 1, 2, times. The combination of the error is 5 and 2. This is a current trip error. The problem is in the outdoor PCB control board. I will tell you what points to check the voltages in the control board to fix it. Whenever the fan works and the compressor does not, other brands could name the current trip error differently. The error could also be different depending on what the manufacturer programmed in the control board. Now, where do we have to start to check and repair this problem in the PCB control board? The current trip error directly relates to this reactor installed with the PCB board. If the reactor is faulty, the current trip error will be shown. So it is possible that by replacing the reactor with a new one, the problem will disappear. If the reactor is okay, I will demonstrate where to start checking the control board step by step. I have installed wires of the PCB with the reactor. I have attached the electric wires with proper connections. Wires for the compressor are also installed inside the PCB board. So cover these compressor connectors with insulated tape to prevent any short circuits. Warning, don't work on electric circuits if you are not a professional or an authorized person. First, I will start checking the voltages from the rectification circuit. Because if any rectifier between these two rectifiers gets faulty, it could create a problem. Now I have passed electricity to the PCB board. The PCB has switched on. The pins in the center of the rectifier are the AC electricity. We are getting 236 volts on these pins of the rectifier. The same voltages are on the second rectifier. Now I have put the multimeter to check DC voltages. 326 DC volts on the first rectifier. And 216 DC volts on the second rectifier. One rectifier should have more than 300 DC volts, and the second should have more than 200 DC volts, which is fine. Now I am checking the voltages on the capacitor. We should get 326 DC voltages on the capacitors. It has three capacitors, and all the capacitors should have the same 326 volts because they are attached in parallel. So we check the voltages till these points, as I am currently measuring the voltage levels to determine their accuracy. I will complete the voltage testing process by opening the PCB and measuring the remaining voltage levels to ensure their proper function. I will test the IPM because sometimes it seems fine without electricity, but when electricity is supplied, it shows a fault. Right now, it is fine. While checking the voltages on the positive and negative pin of the IPM, the voltages should be 326 volts, which is okay here. I have changed the sides of the probes to attach positive with the positive pin and negative with the negative pin. See the same 326 DC volts on the positive pin. 11 volts on this pin, which is fine too. The capacitors and the rectification voltages are also fine. Now I will test the PCB's electronic components. First, I will discharge the capacitors. If you want to work on the PCB board immediately after you unplug the PCB board, or if you want to work after one hour or later, it is important to discharge the capacitor to save yourself from getting shocked. It is very important to use a resistive load for discharging the capacitors. The resistive load could be a bulb or a soldering iron. And if you use a soldering iron, always prefer the soldering iron with a bulb. I will tell you the benefit of the soldering iron with a bulb while discharging the capacitor. First, let me show you the discharging method with the bulb. Connect both wires with the terminals of the capacitors. As you saw that the bulb glowed and turned off, the capacitors have been discharged. Now I will discharge the capacitor with the soldering iron. Attach the wires of the soldering iron with the capacitor. And you saw that the light glowed from the soldering iron, and gradually, 
the light disappeared, which means the capacitors are discharged. This is the benefit that you have a medium to see the capacitor discharging when using soldering iron with a bulb, as you will have no medium to see through when discharging with the soldering iron without a bulb. Otherwise, you will be doubtful about whether capacitors are discharged or not. Now I have discharged the capacitor. Now I will check the IGBT. We can check the IGBT with two methods. The one inside the PCB. The other is by making the IGBT out of the PCB if you have any doubts. Put the multimeter on the diode mode. The multimeter will show some voltages on all the pins and will disappear, as it did now. Now I will check on the next pin. See, the voltages showing on these pins are also disappeared. It means the IGBT is OK. The multimeter shows the voltages in such a way because the IGBT is inside the PCB. Now I have changed the polarity of the probes to check the IGBT. Some voltages are shown on these pins, and the same on these pins as well. The multimeter should not show a zero value. If the discharging diode of the PCB gets faulty, still the compressor will not work. Diode 102 is the discharging diode. If this discharging diode gets weak, the current trip error is shown on the display of the indoor unit. Now let me open the PCB from the cover and show you from the front side. I have opened it now, and this is the 102 number diode which I showed you. Before checking the PCB further, it is also important to check the compressor because if the winding of the compressor is short-circuited or earth leakage, the PCB board will detect that the compressor consumes more current than unusual, and the PCB will think that this is a current trip fault. I have already made a video on how to test a DC compressor watch that video after this one. Now you can see two control boards on the table. This is the same PCB with the current trip error. This is a new Model O General's Mini Split PCB. I will soon film a video on this PCB because the design of this control board is different. Now let's get back to this PCB. I will check the low side components. Checking the resistor numbers 307 and 308 is crucial because the high DC positive voltages pass through these resistors. This circuit is used to detect the current and voltage. It makes a comparison and gives feedback to the microcontroller. If this circuit gets bad, it will show the current trip error. These resistors are installed in series, if these resistors short circuits, this circuit will open up because this circuit is not capable of resisting high voltages. This circuit works with the help of these resistors. These resistors are installed to control the preset current. If this circuit get bad so, what components get damaged? Let me explain to you. If any diode between 303 and 304 gets faulty or both get faulty, the fan will not work. The pin number 1 of the diode 304 is this, and the pin number 1 of diode 303 is this. We should get 15 volts here. And if we are getting 15 volts means the electricity is passing till here, and the PCB is fine. The capacitor could also get faulty. So capacitor number 87, capacitor numbers 84 and 85. If these capacitors short circuits, then it will show this problem. The resistor number 311 and some resistors are on the backside. This is the circuit. Let me zoom the camera on it. The resistors 309 and 310. If these also get bad, the problem will be shown. The IC302 is a dual comparator. It detects the high, low, or if no current passes through the circuit, and it gives feedback to the microcontroller. Then the microcontroller shuts the system. And if the feedback signals are not generated from this circuit, still the microcontroller will turn off the system. We should get 5 volts on resistor 81. The resistor numbers 334, 336, and 337 are written here. But these resistors are installed here on the PCB board. We should get 5 volts on these resistors. If the multimeter shows no 5 volts here, the resistors or the comparator are bad. The resistor number 339 is installed here. If this resistor is faulty the problem will be shown as it is attached to Q300, which is an NPN transistor. It has a built-in double resistor in this NPN transistor. If this gets faulty, still the problem will be shown. This dual comparator has a capacitor 305 installed with it. We should get 12 volts on this capacitor, 
and if we don't get these voltages, the problem of the current trip will be shown, and the compressor will not work. The capacitor number 306 is written here but installed here. We should get 15 volts here. These are all the points to check to fix the current trip error when the compressor not starts, and the fan works. You can support the channel on Patreon, as it will make us help create better quality and knowledgeable content for you. The link is in the description. It will be really appreciable. Click on the left or right thumbnail on the screen to watch our next videos. And subscribe. It's free. Thank you.